CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. And welcome to Pennzoil at the Half. I'm Pat O'Brien, along with my partners, George Raveling and Mike Krzyzewski. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us here. Well, Syracuse, everything going right for them now, huh? Well, certainly, Pat. A number of things have happened for Syracuse. Number one, they've built an impressive inside offense. They've turned Kansas into a passive offense team. They're controlling the backboards, and also they've got Jock Vaughn in foul trouble. Kansas with a lot of woes uh, so far in the game. They're shooting 30%. It looks like Syracuse took their game plan and put it at them, right? Yeah, they, Pat, they have really scored inside. Otis Hill has made some textbook moves inside, and, and Kansas is going to have to do that. LaFrance still hasn't scored, and they need that. Otis, excuse me, Otis Hill with 11 points. Now, if Kansas has a mantra, it's attack the zone, attack the zone, right? <laughs> Absolutely, and they did attack it well uh, at one time. Here we have Paul Pierce with the ball up on top. They put Vaughn on the incident amongst themselves at their team hotel at 11 p.m. on Thursday, the night before the regional semifinal loss to Mississippi State. A short time ago, George Raveling spoke with UConn head coach Jim Calhoun, who said that a couple of his foreign players who he did not name a horsing around in the hallway, a push caused one of them to fall against the door to a guest room, prompting her call to security. Coach Calhoun's wife heard the disturbance, left her room to see several security guards with the UConn players. The security at the hotel uh, has not commented on it, but Jim Calhoun has talked to you about it. Does it sound like much of a story to you? Or? Well, after talking to Ca Coach Calhoun, a couple things I came away with. Number one, it certainly had no negative impact on their game. Number two, it was a situation where a couple players were horsing around and the guests overreacted to their horsing around. All right, George, uh, thank you. Well, coming up uh, later here on CBS, it's game two in the second layer of our games here, Mississippi State and Cincinnati. Let's go down to Lexington for a report now from Jim Nance and Billy Packer. Here's Jim. It should be quite a raucous environment at Rupp Arena as Cincinnati it's only an hour and a half drive from here, and the Bearcats about to face Mississippi State in the Southeast Regional Final. Billy Packer, what a physical matchup we have here today. Well, it will be great down in the paint today. Two contrasting players. Danny Fortson plays low and wide, Jim. He's got a great set of hands on the inside. Cincinnati knows how to get him the ball, and he's a tremendous finisher and great offensive rebounder. There you see him on a great putback. Dampier, on the other hand, plays tall. He goes down into the paint for Mississippi State, plays basically a one-man zone in the lane and has great turnaround jump shot ability, and you can see him right there with his tremendous shot-blocking ability. Down inside for the clear-out, and there is Dampier finish off. On the coach's edge, look, watch what they do to... All right, Jim, thank you. We plan on having a ring walk uh, coming to this game. It's going to be a heavyweight fight. It's going to be a good game, we hope, right? Well, both of these teams are outstanding defensive teams, and they rebound with a vengeance. One thing that jumps out at me, Pat, about Mississippi State is no team so far in the tournament has shot over 34% against them. Give me some players to watch for today. Wilson, Mississippi State, uh, does he get his pet plays, or does Cincinnati take him away? It's 7 for 11 from threes. Uh, against Connecticut, uh, scored 27 of their 60 points, and then fourths and inside for Cincinnati. Can he get the Mississippi State big guys in foul trouble? One thing about Mississippi State, they are a confident team. They're not afraid of anybody, are they? Well, this is an under, undervalued team, Pat. This team is a lot better than people think that they are. Yeah, you guys had them in, their, in your brackets? Um, I, have a, I, have, I have six brackets, so I, I, I put all the teams <laughs> in like there. Bill Rafter. Yeah. How about Fortson? What about him? I think Fortson is just the best low-post power player in the country, and they have a, Mississippi State has not had to defend anybody like him. All right, a lot of people remind them of, of Carl Malone, the Utah Jazz, so that's coming up uh, later on here on CBS. So we at CBS Sports uh, want to extend our best wishes right now for a speedy recover, recovery to Greg Lanthier, head coach of California San Diego, and we all Wish you well. Get well soon, Coach. That's it for us for this halftime. We'll be here all afternoon. Thank you for watching Pennzoil at the Half. Enjoy the second half here on CBS. Pennzoil at the Half was sponsored by Pennzoil. For more engine miles, Pennzoil works like liquid ball bearings. Don Johnson is Mac Bridges, premiering on CBS Friday. We'll be selecting genuine Chevrolet Most Valuable Players of the Game from each team as usual. Today, Chevrolet has contributed almost $5.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. We have a two-point game. Candace on top of Syracuse, John Wallace, 
three of six in the first half for nine points has yet to hit in five tries from the field here in the second half looks a little bit to me as though he's a little uncertain a little tentative when he's shooting now give credit to the defense that Roy Williams has come up to stop him because if you stop uh, John Wallace it's pretty hard for Syracuse to win Kansas with the ball pass on the wing bounce pass for Pollard Hill back in the lineup he's got four on him remember yeah but that was a good move that time trying to pick up the fifth foul on Hill 10 51 to go second half the Pola Hill Sims Wallace and Yanulis the lineup for Syracuse barely went off Pollard will be Syracuse ball Rayford in the lineup Vaughn is out for Kansas Billy Thomas pass LaFrance and Pollard the other Jayhawks and we said Hill had four he has three personals Wallace won't go again over six Hill with the rebound he's going up nice block Pollard with the block Rayford beats half LaFrance slowing up to make the reception of the pass from Haas and he traveled. I know France can run the court up and down but at that speed you shouldn't pass the ball to a guy over 6'6". Kansas still leads by two. Wallace over six in the second half for Syracuse. Again underline the correction on Hill three personals on Otis Hill not four. Zipola. Sims. For Wallace. Wallace tries a jumper and hits his first basket of the second half. Tying it at 46. 11 points for Wallace. Hill got a hand on that pass intended for LaFrance. Kansas ball. He's staying in the 2-3 zone in the out-of-bounds play underneath. He should allow a shot from the outside now. Rayford intended for LaFrance, stolen by Wallace. Here comes Sapola. Sapola goes all the way. Nice and confident. He fake passing the ball over to Z that time. Syracuse back in front. 48 to 46. LaFrance opened the half with six consecutive points for Kansas. And Hill, jumping in front of Pollard, picks up his fourth. They're going to have to take Hill out of the middle of that zone to put him on one of the wings. I would put Wallace in the middle and move Hill to the wing, but I first think that Hill has to go to the bench for a while. There's the foul down low. He came around the baseline side. With the wing spread on Pollard, it makes it tough to come around the weak side. See the wing spread on him? Yeah, with that position he had on Pollard, was it wise for him to try and knock that pass down? Well, not to knock the pass down, but get position because he knows he's in the zone and the weak side is covered. Wallace grabs this rebound to Sims. Syracuse by two and the ball. Wallace pull up over Pollard, won't go, but he's pushed by Pollard. He elevates so fast, Wallace, you can't block his shot from outside. They were fortunate that was in two-point land rather than in three because he, he, he would have get he would have gotten three shots. Now watch how quick he elevates. Again, he gets real close to Pollard. Crossover dribble, good ball handling. Now watch him elevate, and the release is so high, it's almost impossible to stop. 30-point game against Georgia in the overtime. He scored the winner. He had 15 boards. 9 of 12 from the free throw line, where he is strong. He shoots these at 76%. Plus the key thing he did in the whole game was that pass to Zipola. Yeah. Missing the second. It's a three-point game. Syracuse on top. Vaughn back in the game for Kansas. Can't give him that shot. No way. Ryan Robertson missing. And Cipolla with a valuable rebound. Thompson, heavy defense by the Jayhawks. Man to man. Reef Snyder. Nice shot from Reef Snyder. Here they come back at you. If you score, they come right down and back to you. Five point lead. Hass in the corner. Robertson inside for Pollard. Pollard, nice move over Reef Snyder. 51 48 Syracuse. 10 points for Pollard. 
Jay Williams getting ready to come in along with two more Jayhawks. Newless pass for Cipolla. All the way over to Sim. Ball is watched by Pollard. Ball is takes it in. Missing off the glass. Ball is a little slow to get up. Vaughn. Pass. And Sims. Got his foot on that intended pass, and it's 7.57 to go with timeout. First tip in the final four next Saturday, 5.42 Eastern time. The winners of this game, Syracuse and Kansas, against the winner of Mississippi State and Cincinnati. That game to follow here today on CBS. UMass and Kentucky already headed to the Meadowlands. It is a three-point game here. Syracuse, the four seed in the West, leading number two, Kansas. Here's a look at the foul situation. Hill with four, Vaughn Pollard and LaFrance, three each for Kansas. 7.55 to go. alley -oop to Williams. Perfect feed from Jock Vaughn. reason that worked is because Hill's on the bench. Otherwise, he would have stopped that. B.J. Williams, big man against Arizona off the bench. 18 points and nine boards. Syracuse by one. Steal, near steal by Vaughn. Good recovery, Cipolla. Cipolla hits a three. What a clutch play by Jason Cipolla. Big, big confidence. Almost lost the ball, got his confidence and buried it. Ten points. He had 17 against Georgia. Playing with his two fingers wrapped on a shooting hand. Following an early cut in this game. Pierce missing badly. Rebound, Syracuse. Bergen will be short. Vaughn grabs a rebound. Vaughn knows where Hass is all the time. Vaughn pulls up. Let's go for him. Wallace with it. I slow down a little bit, Syracuse. Your trails are coming back. Well, slow. Wallace is coming back down court. I need a little clock here to get Hill back in sooner. Hill Tim. should come back in with about four minutes to go in the game. Sims gets the play call from Beheim and takes it the distance. Won't go for him. Rebound by Haas, one-on-one -on -one against Cipolla. Back comes Sim to help. Haas holds it up. Vaughn will start the backcourt play. Pierce. The ever-present 2-3 zone. Haas for three. Williams, the rebound. Blind pass, Cipolla stole it. BJ chased it down, but was relaxed when he passed, which created the turnover. Tim slowing it down. Four points, Syracuse lead. Approaching the six-minute mark. Reef Snyder in the spot. Normally occupied by Hill. A bad pass off the toe of John Wallace. Turnover, Syracuse. He's in the middle. He's a destroyer in there. Gone. I, I'm telling you, Tim, Syracuse is breathing. They, they need rest. They're just tired out out there. There's constant fresh people coming in from Kansas over and over, wearing them down. Four subs just came on the floor for the Jayhawks. Cipolla picked up the foul on Vaughn. Here, here goes the second team All-American, first team All-Academic American. Finishes up, will go to the foul line for two. Vaughn at the line. New troops in for Kansas. Billy Thomas on the floor. Ryan Robertson returns. The French back in. Pollard and Vaughn, the other two. That picture we just showed you, that was uh, Jock Vaughn's mother. Her name is Winnie. My, my, my mother's name is Winnie. What's her name? Linny, with an L. Linny, Linny with an L. There my she mother's is. name is Winifred. So what? So what? She's <laughs> a great, great, great lady. Here we go. <laughs> Sims. Bergen off the mark. Picks up his third personal. Two point game, Syracuse. Nice pass underneath, pretty good timing. He just hit his wrist on the rim, which created the turnover. Or the miss uh, alley oop. 5.37 remains. Kansas ball. Pola. Sims, Bergen, Hill, Wallace, starting lineup for Syracuse, back on the floor. They got Hill in the middle of that zone again. I'd put Wallace in the middle and put uh, 
uh, uh, and put Hill on the wing. Because Hill will pick up his third, fourth, fifth foul. Vaughn pumps once, driving into the lane, kicks it out to Billy Thomas. Thomas missed badly. Ball goes out, and it'll be Syracuse ball. The outside ref called that Roy don't uh, uh, argue the baseline ref. The outside ref called it. When they put their hand on their head, that means let me have the call. I had the better angle. I think probably what Roy Williams was saying, hey, too physical down low. He bumped LaFrenz. But the outside ref called that shot. Or called that uh, uh, the missed shot. The didn't hit shot. anything. Air ball. It went out of bounds as an air ball. That's a Syracuse ball. Two-point Syracuse lead, 4.44 to go. Got to tell an exciting game, exciting. Hold on. Sims underneath for Hill, and he's fouled by LaFrentz. That should be four on LaFrentz. And it is. LaFrentz tries to come around in front of Hill. Kind of a bullet pass here. That's where the foul. That was a good foul because Hill had inside position. Little forearm shiver there from LaFrentz. Syracuse by two, 54 to 52. From now on, both teams are in a one and one. This is Hill, double team, forces it up. LaFrentz takes it away. Need a basket this time down, Jayhawks. Gone so quickly down the floor. Out to Robertson. The freshman missing Wallace with a big rebound. Four minute mark, that means a chess game. Then the coaches enter the game at the four minute mark. Robertson, the steal, Vaughn behind the back. All alone as Thomas lost the ball. Thomas was looking to make the basket. Good no call that time on Vaughn. Time out. Four to 52, 3.48 to go. Kansas shooting at only 37% from the field. And from three-point range, three of 20. They are normally 33% on the season. Robinson leaves the ball down to Jock Vaughn. Good no call here in a possible charge. He passed it behind the back. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Ides of March appear. Here's another angle on it. He just couldn't get the handle of the ball. Billy Thomas. Suffering a little March Madness. Kansas scores 81 points a game. Syracuse scores 77. And we only have 343 to go, both under 60. Syracuse come into March like a lamb, but they're going out like a lion. Cole feeding inside. Wallace takes it up. Wait on this foul. May have been off the ball. It is Pollard. Kansas with three full timeouts and 120 left. I'm not looking to hex someone, but it seems at this time of the game, Wallace all of a sudden concentrates and doesn't touch anything but net. Let's see what happens. Nope. Four personals on Pollard. Wallace. Struggled a bit here in the second half. 4 of 14 from the field, and he's 76% from the free throw line. And he makes the second one. Well, I was looking at the game the other day against Georgia, where in the last five minutes of the game, oh, the yeah. overtime, he was just dynamite. Was he ever? The last 10 points scored for Syracuse by John Wallace on route to a 30 point night. Constant 2 3 zone. I told you earlier, the attack is zone. You got to remember, you're going to average 60 some odd points rather than 80 points or 78, which Kansas averages. Thomas along the baseline won't go for him. Knocks the ball away from his own teammate, LaFrance, and it comes to Cipolla. Syracuse has had more than their share of breaks here in the second half, helping them to a three point lead. They'll go around the horn once or two, eat up a little clock, and then they'll try to get the ball to Wallace. Mainly Wallace being the star that if he does get the ball, he'll get fouled. And Wallace. 
57 to 52. Coach McGuire all over that one as usual. Got to move quickly now. Look for the good shot. They got to move quickly. Five point game. Haller kicks it back out for Haas. Good recovery by Sim. Vaughn for Billy Thomas. Thomas has been struggling. The French has it knocked away by Wallace. And Wallace picks up the foul. His first. They yeah, foul from the backside. Jim Beheim held his breath that time. He thought maybe it was the fifth foul on Hill. Big O. Pierce comes in for Kansas. Billy Thomas goes out. Seventh team foul against Syracuse. The good, French one and one. Sorry, good move that time. Thomas has been cold. So Roy uh, Roy Williams put in Pierce, who is a a superstar even as a freshman. French all had it knocked away. Good defense. Cipolla, I believe, the man to get a hand on it, knocking it out of Pollard's hand. As we get to the two-minute mark in a two-possession game. Seems a long pass, too long, intercepted. Is out of bounds off the hands of an Orangeman, Otis Hill. Give him Ethan. What a game Hill has played. Absolutely. Two Take, in a row. He was excellent against Georgia. Taking charges, putting back feedbacks, doing uh, defensive uh, work. And Beheim said he's just been real tough the last month of the season. This is Vaughn. Driving the lane, kicking out for Pierce. Pierce is short. Rebound comes to Sims. Two on one. Bergen takes it back outside. Good backup. The clock is as much as an opponent right now as the Jayhawks are. 145 left to play. Bad pass, and Bergen lucky to keep it from Vaughn. They'll be double teaming the guy with the ball every chance they can. Here it comes a double team again. They broke it, and they can score on this end. Cipolla pumps once. Back outside the hill. Ten seconds on the shot clock. In the corner, Bergen, does he see it? Down to five. Underneath, it's up. Locked away, and Pollard comes down with a two-on-one break. Pierce, and he is blocked out of the play. Cross body block by Bergen. Four on Todd Bergen. Jim Beheim's very upset. They, they, they thought that Jim Vaughn, uh, uh, Jock Vaughn charged there, and here's a complete wipeout. Go to the foul line for two shots. Here's a low angle look. It looks to me that maybe he did charge that time. Would have been his fourth personal. And there's just a wipeout by Todd. Bergen on Pierce sending him to the line. 118 to play. Syracuse by five. Pierce with nine points. He had 20 against Arizona. And he's not a great free throw shooter. 59%. Hits that one cleanly. He needs to make this one. That makes it a one possession game. If he makes this one, listen up now, gang. If he makes this one, there should be heavy pressure up court by the Jayhawks. Big time pressure. Each team with three timeouts. Kansas has a 20 left as well. And Pierce calmly makes a pair. Three point game, 118 to go. You got to remember. With the Pentium processor inside your PC. 118 left. And a three-point game, Syracuse. You know, the Syracuse zone, we've talked about it a lot. It's done a great job holding Kansas to 54 points. One of Kansas's four losses was to Temple, the only team they played all year that used the zone extensively, and it was a game they lost. They zoned approximately 80% of the time. John Shane is one of the better coaches in the country. But the other reason they lost to Temple, Temple played them physically. So if you could play Kansas physical and face them with his own, it gives them major headaches. How do you pass all the way? For Bergen, what a pass. John Wallace with another strike, throwing it like John Elway might right here in Denver. Again, Jim Beheim's uh, talking to the referees. He wanted that to be an intentional. That would give you two shots and a ball out. Here comes the touchdown pass from the end zone. Bergen. And he's fouled by Powell. Pollard, that'll be his fifth, and he's out of there. That's a strong arm to be able to pass it that far. Ran into Donovan McNabb in the elevator the other day uh, between the Georgia game and this one and asked him if he had been working with Wallace, and he said, oh, of course, we work all the time. McNabb, of course, the quarterback of the Syracuse football team, and a very good one. 
and a reserve on the basketball team. Now, with the key here, he has to make this one because it makes it a two-possession game for Kansas. Nope, it's a one-possession game. Still a three-point margin. Kansas got the bullet. Although Pollard's out with five fouls. 109 to go. Jock, you've got to take over. You're the man. Half. Missing the three. Push off by Williams B.J. that time, I believe. B.J. Williams, one of the heroes of the Arizona, went off the bench. He's got three personal. Now, you think you understand what I'm saying here about possessions, Tim? In the possession, uh, Williams pushes off after this shot. But now they got to make one shot down the other end. That means that Kansas has to have the ball at least two times, and there's only a minute left to go. And a three-point lead for Syracuse. Trying to get to the final four. Bergen at the line. He's not a great free throw shooter. You saw him miss two. And that's Ooh. in and out. And another bullet dodged by the Jayhawks. Under a minute we go. Ryan Robertson, the freshman, kicks it out for half. Here's Vaughn, the main man. Watched by Wallace. They want a three. They want to hit from three-point land, three-ball land. Clock starting to dig down a little bit. 15 seconds left. I get it to Robinson in the corner if you can. Or Haas, Robinson or Haas. Robinson, let Here's it Here's Robertson, driving the baseline, kicks it out again, three seconds in the corner. Haas gets it up, and a miss. Off the hands of Wallace, it appeared. No. Good timeout by the Jayhawks. Off a Jayhawk, it'll be Syracuse ball with 23.2 left. When we return to Denver and a three-point Syracuse lead. Two seconds left the clock. He kicks it out to Hass. Hass kind of puts off an off uh, bent shot there. Didn't go in. And the ball went off Kansas, even though it appeared uh, when we saw it that it was Wallace's hand. Went off the hands of B.J. Williams, so it is Syracuse ball, 23.2 to go. And remember, if Kansas fouls are in the bonus now, they'll be automatically two shots. Ball at the pass for Hill. Fouled immediately by half. Syracuse, 57 to 54. Both Roy Williams and Jim Beheim have been to the Final Four twice. Syracuse getting knocked out in last year's tournament by Arkansas in the second round in overtime. This Jim coach, Beheim, he's done a great job, Tim, in a lot of areas. You know, the last three times they got knocked out of the NCAA, it was in overtime. Lost to UMass in overtime, Missouri in overtime, and Arkansas last year in overtime. Two shots coming from Otis Hill. Three of five, make it four of six. This guy has just been a pillar of strength, to use a cliche deliberately, because he has shown that in the last two games for Syracuse of confidence and it's a four five point game Syracuse 59 to 54 you don't need the three you need a score so go for the two or the three Bond with a clutch shot Jock Bond timeout with 13 three left Syracuse by two Jock Bond here tries to get the ball to their score a Haas but Jack can bury it from any place in the court, and here he proves it. A big time three. 21 points for Jock Bonney. He averages 10 and a half a game. Any question about him being able to score? The long pass to Cipolla, fouled by Vaughn, down to 12.5 left. Well, Vaughn has certainly answered uh, any skeptics about his ability to score. When he needs to, he's shown it here today, but he's his a team down by two. He's the player player. Here's the strong arm by Wallace. Beautiful pass. Nice foul by Jock there. Otherwise, the game would have been over. Cipolla at the line. He has 10 points. Cipolla shoots free throws at 66%. You got to make two to ice it. Nope, he's in trouble. Kansas fans applaud the miss. Syracuse with all three timeouts, Kansas with only one more. Makes the second. Now they three point game. Don't want to give the outside shot, but they don't want to foul. You got to move up on Vaughn, you got to move up on Pierce, and especially Robertson in the corner. Get five seconds, Robertson. four seconds. 
Three seconds. Vaughn going for it again. Doesn't drop. Rebound by Pierce. Throws it up, and it's too wow, late. Wow, what a win by the Orangemen. Syracuse to the final four. 60 to 57. The third final four for Jim Beheim. Last time there in 87, he lost to Indiana in the championship game. They'll have another shot at the Meadowlands. The four-seeded Orangemen upsetting the number two seeds in the West, the Jayhawks of Kansas. A uh, Jock Bowen, he has a good look. He plays it. It would have been good. There's no chance to tap out because the clock stops. Excellent ball game. A look at the Kansas bench in these final seconds. And nothing but disappointment on the part of the Jayhawks. Jim Beheim, no smile. Check that out. There's a sigh of relief. Who says he can't coach? One of the best coaches in the country. He proved in the last 20 years. The Orangemen have upset Kansas and head to the Meadowlands to the Final Four. 16 NCAAs for Jim Beheim, two Final Fours, one final. He and his Syracuse Orangemen will get another chance next week at the Meadowlands. Otis Hill, one of the men of the hour, another brilliant game for Otis Hill, the junior from White Plains, New York. Kansas tied up John Wallace, bunch of the game, and Hill stepped into the breach. Our Chevrolet players of the game from Syracuse. Otis Hill with 15 points and six rebounds following up his great effort against Georgia. Jock Vaughn, brilliant today in the losing cause. 21 points, four assists. He did everything he asked of him against the Syracuse zone. He simply couldn't do more, and it turned out to be not enough. Syracuse into the final four. UMass and Kentucky are already there. And coming up next on CBS, Cincinnati and Mississippi State will fill out the fourth member of the final four. Stay with us for more on March Madness here on CBS. We'll take you to Pat O'Brien at our studios in New York after this message. dance floor sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> Coming up next, we'll send you down to Lexington for the Southeast Regional Final between 5th seeded Mississippi State and number two Cincinnati. Despite donning the double zero, Darrell Wilson has put up the numbers for Mississippi State, scoring a team-high 27 points in Friday's upset of UConn. But junior Damon Flint has sparked the Bearcat attack, leading the team with 58 points in three tournament tilts. Uh, excitement out in Denver. Let's go right back out in Tim and Al. Tim? Syracuse involved in another thrilling finish, and they are into the final four. The whole damn team is here. Let's go to, let's go, let's go to Al McGuire to talk to Jim Behan. All right, Jim. Wine to me. Tell me what's wrong. Well, we missed four free throws down the end. Oh, <laughs> terrible, terrible. What a tough life you got, Mark. Congratulations. These kids are great kids. They played hard all year long, Al. They didn't let anything bother them. Tough home court here with you. Oh, wine, wine. Great all wine some more, my man. <laughs> Otis Hill, 15.6 rebounds, our player of the game after 19 against Georgia. <laughs> The big O had some foul problems today, but you hung in there again. Yeah, well, <laughs> the most important thing was to stay in there and help my teammates out. John said, you know, you need me to stay in there, and Z said it's a big part of the win, so I just had to stay in there. John Wallace, you had, 19, you had 30 points in the Georgia game, 15 again today. They were all over you here early. My teammates still got me the ball. I missed a lot of shots, but we still won the game. That's the bottom line. It don't matter what happens. As long as we win the game, that's all that matters, baby. Right. Rochester, New York. Syracuse. Oh, my God, baby. Yeah. Syracuse in the house. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Syracuse in the house. Oh, my God. Syracuse in the house. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Don't lose our coach. 
We'll send them to the final four and send it back to you, Pat O'Brien, after this commercial message. Got it. This is what it's all about. This is what you start your season thinking about, getting into the final four, cutting down those nets, and heading out to the Meadowlands to play bigger time college basketball. The first final four is 1987 for Syracuse, and the first Big East team to go to the final four is 1989. And guys, you just look at those faces, and it warms your heart, doesn't it, George? Warms your heart. It warmed Jim Beheim's heart. They did a nice job today. Talk to me about the game. Even well, with the missed free throws at the end. I thought a big thing uh, uh, for Syracuse is their zone really spread Kansas's offense. It spread their offense so wide that Kansas had only one person that could get to the offensive board. And on most possessions, they only got one shot at the basket. Kansas just couldn't shoot the ball today, could they? No, the, the Syracuse played excellent defense, but also Hill and Wallace were big. Uh, Jim Beheim, got, I'm going to listen to his clinic on inbounding the basketball because he inbound the basketball each time with John Wallace doing it, and he got it to his best guy down the stretch, John Jared, Wallace. Jared Hass, uh, just three points. His elbow obviously bothered him today. It must have been, and uh, you feel sorry for a kid who goes into a, the biggest game of the year and not at 100%. Uh, percent. There are the orange men clipping the nets down, and uh, Mike Krzyzewski, you've been there a few times, and that's just got to be a great feeling. Uh, another development here in New York is we now have a replay of Al McGuire's dance out there. We're going to put it on the Telestrator and see what we can see up close and personal with Al. Go well, ahead, can Mike. Can we stop it right here? Because take a look at his hand movements. Now, he's not a one-dimensional player. He will also put some facial expressions <laughs> in. Now, you have to watch both. And it's like these modern dances, no one's paying attention to them. Here we go. See those hand <laughs> movements? And look at his face right, right here. And watch, watch Ryan. And then he falls down at the end. He tried to put a break dance in at the end. Look at these two guys. <laughs> those are our guys. We love them. We'll be back in a minute. Stay with us. Coming up, more basketball. <laughs> One comment on the game. Uh, Four-letter word, fouls. Making foul shots and avoiding fouls. I think this could be a game of attrition. Which team has five guys standing in the last four minutes of the game? Eight minutes to the tip. Any suggestions for Bob Huggins? Well, I'm anxious to see uh, Bobby's game plan because I think it's going to center around taking Wilson out of the game and not giving him open looks for his three. All right, we have one more team to add to our final four. Will it be Mississippi State or will it be Cincinnati? We'll find out when we send you out there after work from your local station. Stay with us.